Hi, welcome back to the Save It For Parts channel. I've got something really cool today. You might have seen my prior video where I made this propane fueled potato cannon. And you may have noticed that I put a threaded adapter on my barrel so that I can put different attachments onto the combustion chamber of this cannon. So what I have on this gun now is my repeating rubber bouncy ball gun with a self-feeding magazine. So I can fire rubber balls out of this thing in a semi-automatic mode without reloading. And you can see how this works here. This magazine tube comes up and I have a screw fitting here where I can drop my bouncy balls in. And this is all just assembled in the same way that I did my regular 2 inch diameter potato barrel with the PVC cement and the purple primer. And that's pretty much how you do normal plumbing. Except in this case we're using it to do something that PVC really wasn't designed for in the first place. These little balls are the perfect size to fit in a 1 inch PVC pipe. And I went down to my local Axeman surplus store and just kind of dug around until I found some that seem to be the right size. I have these two-tone balls as well, which are a slightly smaller size, and I might uh, compare these a little bit to see which ones feed more smoothly. So once I have the magazine filled up, I cap off this tube to keep it airtight, and then as I fire the propane chamber, each ball gets fired out of the barrel, and the next ball drops down into this PVC T, where it's kind of held in place between two pieces of the one inch PVC. Now I got a little curious about my feed mechanism. As you can see, it's mostly a gravity-fed system where each ball drops in, gets fired out, and then another one drops down. But what if we had a spring-loaded magazine where the balls are pushed into place with a spring? That way I could have my magazine at any angle, and theoretically the balls wouldn't just dump into the barrel if I shake this too much. So I found a spring that fits in there, and fits in my end cap, so I might give that a try here. I'm going to try this with the magazine oriented down towards the bottom of the gun, so it can act as a vertical grip as well. And let's just try a few of these orange balls. So with this setup, my bouncy ball magazine is on the bottom, and I'm going to see if that spring can push each ball into position and let me fire this semi-automatically. Now I'm going to try some of those smaller green balls, and I've just shot myself in the leg with a bouncy ball. This is one of the hazards of using rubber ammunition. So my spring-loaded mechanism doesn't seem to work terribly reliably, although it did work for a few shots. I'm going to go back to the top load for just a couple more shots here. <laughs> Every now and then, one of them wiggles out and falls out the barrel. So I can't complain about the power on this, it really whips the balls through this cardboard. And this box isn't just hollow, it's packed full of smaller boxes. So you can kind of see some of the balls got embedded in there pretty deep. There's one way in there. 
Um, some of the weaker shots just bounced off the cardboard, and you saw that I hit myself in the leg there with a rebound. And one of the downsides of this design is I have rubber balls all over my garage now. So I started out with about 26 of these balls, and this is all I can find at the moment. I think I can dig a few more out of that cardboard. But, um, yeah, another downside is it's hard to find this ammo again. Uh, these little guys are about a quarter each, so I'm going to see if I can find some cheaper ones that come in bulk or hunt around my garage and figure out where all of my test shots bounce to. These little two-colored balls seem to feed a little differently than the solid colors. They feel slightly different. They're more squishy. Uh, they're a little rougher. These are smoother and harder. I think these are also a slightly larger diameter. So I'm still figuring out which ones feed the most reliably. It seems like these ones work pretty well, but every now and then one gets jammed. With these guys, every now and then one rolls all the way out of the barrel before it's ready to fire. So I think these are just a little too small, and these are a little too big. So I either need to find something in the middle, or maybe smooth these down a little bit, maybe take off this seam that can get caught inside the PVC. And once I do that, I think this will be a pretty reliable way to shoot bouncy balls for no reason. So I'm pretty pleased with this rubber ball cannon, or at least amused. It, um, it does a pretty good job at flinging rubber balls all over my garage and putting some big holes in a cardboard box, which is about what I expected from it. My feed system could use a little more work to get it to work reliably and at any angle. It works pretty well as a gravity feed, not quite as well as a spring feed, but it works okay with those smaller balls with the spring feed. So thank you for watching, and if you want to see more crazy projects like this, or like my boat projects, go ahead and like and subscribe, and you'll be notified when I come up with new stupid ideas and ways to injure myself. And if you want to see me attach other things to this potato gun, or come up with some other barrel options for these uh, interchangeable barrels, go ahead and leave me a comment. Some of the ideas so far have included a grappling hook launcher, and some kind of a horn or whistle device. Uh, those are just some of the things I could try bolting on here or screwing on here with this uh, removable barrel system. And if you've got another idea for something to put on here, let me know and maybe it'll show up as a future video. Thanks again for watching and we'll see you next time. And I'm out of balls.